I have a giveaway going on at the moment for Anthem the Game to celebrate reaching 3000 subs. To be in with a chance to win, simply click on the link in the description below for ways to enter. Good luck, and now on with the usual broadcast. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video. So if you was around yesterday, mid-afternoon, late afternoon-ish, you would have seen this guy roaming around. Well, maybe you would have seen this guy, I didn't see this guy, maybe you saw this guy, maybe someone else saw this guy, but definitely not me. However, I did see the little ones, but sadly I didn't see that guy, but Justin Farmer did and he provided this clip on Twitter for you all to see. So credit to him for the footage, but just check out how awesome this battle looks. So after seeing what looked like the cataclysm or a shaper storm in the air, a bunch of you got to Twitter, as well as I did, what the hell was going on, right? So Michael Gamble this morning decided it's finally time to come clean now that everyone has seen and experienced. A couple people asked, so I'm going to clarify. That thing today was shaper technology starting to go off the rails. And the key point here is starting. Weird things will pop up, more dangerous creatures fill the lands. But oh, oh no. That was not the worst it gets. So expect a lot more. We had meteor showers coming down, hitting people, and the meteor showers that were coming down could actually be collected for Legendary Ember. Pretty cool touches there, and it's nice to see this sort of thing. Along with this, it's nice to see that the free roam world will actually be relevant from now to the end. There is never gonna be a time that the free roam world will not be relevant. And now it kind of makes sense why the free roam world at least is four players, right? Because it's still kind of like a mini exploration area. You've got your lost sectors, your lore to find, you've got mini world events going on. If cataclysms and shaper storms take place, you've got almost colossal like creatures invading and more. And this is just a teaser. They only gave you a teaser of what's to come in the final build. So definitely a lot of good stuff here to look forward to. And after seeing all this awesome display on the show, Nathan Ventura asked Mike Gamble, will you guys be giving us more details of endgame events post-launch? Possible raid-like event with bosses that require heavy mechanics, or is everything being kept quiet until launch? Mike Gamble simply responded, very soon. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of endgame over the next few weeks once the game is out. Right now, I'm pretty sure they are being hard on focus to get everything ironed out for the final release. So, with that said, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the demo. Did you take part in the mini event? Was it there for the cataclysm or shaper technology as they're putting it? Was you there to fight the ancient ash titan? Did you encounter an ancient ash titan? Was you lucky enough? If you was, if you have any footage and you want to show it, send it my way and I'll get it featured in the next video. With that said, good stuff. And now, on to a news roundup. First of all, I'm going to just get this one out the way because people are still asking this question to this very day. Is there going to be kind of like any pay to win or any items in the MTX store that's not available for coin purchase? IJ Cube asks, individual colors are not going to be blocked by microtransactions, are they? Michael Gamble responded, no, nothing is gated behind microtransaction only. There are some non-microtransaction exceptions. These are related to the pre-order or promotional bonuses, like the vinyls that you get from GameStop for example, or the Legion of Dawn armor set that you get if you get the Legion of Dawn edition. These are restricted to those only and cannot and will not be available throughout the lifespan of the game unless you get those versions, but outside of those, there will be no other item that you can't get with coin and can only get through microtransaction. Everything you can get with microtransaction currency, the shards, will be available with coin so i hope this rests this matter to bed now and if it doesn't and people are moaning about it just show them this and they hopefully should have the answer they need there was one bug that really irritated me in anthem and it's not a bug sadly it's actually a design feature darth raider also has a similar problem with it and he says is there supposed to be a respawn ability or do we just have to wait to be revived in the finished game Jonathan Warner responds, as long as you are not in a respawn restricted area, you can. Otherwise, 
you have to wait to be repaired or parts you wipe. Now this is fine and all, but a couple of times when I was in a stronghold through full matchmaking, I was going along and if I went down, my teammates weren't getting me up and they were literally progressing to the end of the game and I was still stuck there without being taken forward or anything. I basically couldn't do anything, they weren't coming back to get me. So I pretty much had to stay there until they finished the mission and then got whatever reward I got. Not fun, really bad design and I hope they change this going forward. So factions will play a big role when it comes to Anthem and we don't really know much about it. As we don't know much about it, more and more questions were being directed to Mike Gamble and Ben Irving regarding this very topic. Redundance UK asked, if you increase reputation with one faction, will it decrease another? Or are they completely separate so you can befriend them all? The response to this was, in conversations, you'll have to make choices for one faction or another, which basically means you can only follow the dialogue of one of the three factions at launch. But you can make up for it by running free play or missions, so you can still pick up their quests and do the required mission objectives. However, in terms of lore, you can only go through one critical path. Maybe at a later point they will allow you to go through other critical paths and see what they are so you can learn more about them. But as of right now, you can only follow one critical path when it comes to factions. And after being bombarded with a bunch of questions, Mike Gamble decided to take to Twitter and give more info. Have we talked about reputation challenges? No? Okay, Arcanists, Freelancers and Sentinels represent the factions, currently in Anthem. Doing missions, making conversation choices, doing free play events will all give you specific points for each faction. Getting those points applies to challenges which unlock crafting blueprints and other goodies. They also change the look of your personal Fort Tarsus. And that's pretty interesting and that's why it's your personal Fort Tarsus and that's why it's a solo instance Fort Tarsus. Because based on your choices and your preferences, your own instance hub will change in design. So I expect a lot of people to be posting their pictures as their Fort Tarsus changes. Gamble continued to say, there are three challenges for each factions in the launch game. So hopefully we can do all three of them, which will be nine to give us that bit more longevity. And hopefully once we've completed one faction, we can just move on to the others rather than just doing challenges with no story. Cause I'd love to get to know each faction as a whole. Right, so we get onto the final leg of the video. We're gonna be going through updates to launch and fixes and what you should be looking forward to come the 15th and the 22nd of February. Mark McGinley asks, any particular reason Fort Tarsus is in first person? Performance issues with javelin customization or design choice? Warner says it's a design choice. We wanted a more intimate experience. Now me personally, I would prefer if they gave us the option to have third person or first person. I can get why they wanted to go with a third person appeal here, especially when you're talking with NPCs and whatnot. However, I think given the choice, I probably would have went with third person. It just feels more natural. And the way the Fort Tarsus is designed, it almost feels like it's completely detached from the main game. So I'm not sure if this was a good design choice. I understand why it was done, but given the user an option to have third person and first person would have definitely been beneficial. So it's no secret that the Colossus is in need of a buff. Some people don't believe so after you've equipped it, but in the vanilla state, it's the weakest of the four javelins. There's no denying this. It's got no health, the shield is completely underwhelmingly weak, it takes a couple shots and it goes down. The javelin itself as well is extremely weak and goes down. Once you attach a couple rare Colossus structural mods, then you become a complete powerhouse and it's a lot harder to take you down. And I do mean this, it's a lot harder. But in the vanilla state, it's just too weak. And I think starting out in the game, if you go with the Colossus, until you get these mods to drop, you're gonna have a bad time. And you don't wonder because the Interceptor, Storm and the Ranger feel great out the box. So the Colossus should too. Raycon asks, how about Colossus buffs? Will they arrive for the 15th? Ben Irving says, looking at it, doing some overall balance stuff for launch on the 15th. Of course, then you're gonna get people that don't believe Colossus need a buff because you can apply mods, but you shouldn't need to apply a mod for it to be good out the box, right? But Ben Irving responds to those comments by saying, that's why I said balance pass overall. I think they probably need some better shield scaling and maybe HP scaling, but team is looking at game all together. So you can rest assured on the 15th, the Colossus will feel a lot better. 
in terms of survivability and defensive shield ability. This to me is a good thing because I think that's pretty much what the Colossus was lacking. David Ohion asks, will the upcoming fixes made to the full version be ready for the 15th for Premier players? Gamble said, many for the 15th, many for the 22nd. And this leads me on to the next point. Most of what you saw for the demo weekends are addressed for the official launch day patch on the 22nd. So expect a day one patch. So there will be a day one patch for you to download in order to make sure the game is in the best condition possible. So as you are flying around in the free roam world, you may have noticed this as well. Well, Julian Alvarado kind of got a little ticked off. I hope you guys fix the ultra annoying disappearing mobs. It is extremely frustrating by fighting against a powerful enemy for it just to vanish into thin air. It happened to me the whole time during the demo. Now for me, it was generally just a couple of enemies that this happened to, or a couple of wildlife, but never something that was consistent. Michael Gamble did respond, we think we fixed this in the main game. It needs more testing to make sure, and you can blame me for that one. The programmer asked to put it into the demo, but we didn't want to take the extra risk as the fix came in late. Spike asks, is it safe to delete the demo client after the demo gets over? Will the main game be updated over the demo client, or will we get a whole new client to preload on 13th? Ben Irving said, you should remove the demo client. And this is really important guys, the demo client, because it is a old build, an old branch of the main release, could interfere and could leave lasting remnants and could create conflicts in the code if you keep it on your platform. So please delete it, listen to what the developers are saying, remove all traces of and from the demo, nothing you have done in the demo will transfer to the main release. So just delete it, remove it from your system, and when the final release is available on the 13th and the 20th for pre-download, download the full version and you'll be fine. This one was actually complained about in my actual Discord today. Spotlight Gaming asks, Thanks Mike, during the open demo we got booted back to the fort four times in a row, every time we did a stronghold. At the main boss, will there be a save point to come back to the last save point for group leader to start it up where we got kicked? Now obviously what he's asking for here is checkpoints and stuff like this, but if you're getting booted from the server, Going back into the instance, you're just going to go back into a fresh instance, so there won't be something like this in Anthem. There really isn't anything, unless you're talking about specific raids with checkpoint boss encounters. The stronghold itself is not a checkpoint boss encounter, it's one long mission with a boss at the end. So it wouldn't work here, but if you look at games like Destiny or Final Fantasy XIV, where you defeat a boss and you move on to the next encounter, those are hard checkpoints that you get to, and those hard checkpoints are flags. So. Maybe it could work, I seriously doubt it. However, most importantly, that server crash has been fixed. So it shouldn't be a problem come the 15th or the 22nd. So if you're watching this and you were the one in Discord complaining about it, rest assured, it is fixed. Dexter Frost asks, with the team widget in full game, I would imagine it would show you when a teammate is down. And Irving responded, this, that is correct. This is really annoying currently and it was really frustrating in the demo because every time someone went down, you had no idea that they were down. And if they didn't have VoIP enabled, you couldn't hear them. And then you'd wonder like, why am I left with three players? And you'd look behind you and you can't see the person, but you look in your party list and you're a team of four. And then you're so far ahead that you can't go back anymore. And because the way of the respawn system working, which I think is terrible by the way, they're stuck there for the rest of the encounter. So the fact that we can now get a visual cue on this is really, really, really good. And to finish the video off, here's some bullet points from Mike regarding what to expect when the game finally launches. A full main story with amazing cutscenes and performances. Thumbs up from me so far. Three Fort Tarsis agents, each with a full optional arc of missions. Some don't open up until after the main story. These are your factions. Free play full of world events and variants in a world we can change at a moment's notice much like the shape attack that was going out of control. So these can be done at a moment's notice. They can activate these anytime they want in game, which is damn awesome because it gives them complete control of everything they do, unlike other games, which require like seven months to update. He goes on, Fort Tarsis full of characters to talk to and make decisions with, continuing after the main story is done, much like the bartender Amal and other characters. Good stuff and it shows that there will still be stuff to listen to and learn after the game is complete. 
there will be six additional optional missions related to the critical path. The demo showed three, and much more. There's a ton of content in Anthem, and that's all before Endgame. Now, you would think by reading this over here that there's only nine missions in the main campaign, right? Because that's how I took this. You played three missions in the campaign, and he's saying there's six additional optional missions. And I don't understand why he's using optional. This confuses me, and it still confuses me. And if we go over to the next tweet, Jeremy Thomas was also confused. So the main story, six optional missions, three of which we've already seen, also arcs from three factions. Mike Gamble responded, that's correct. I'm not going to name how many missions are in each of the arcs or main story, because I don't want to spoil it. There are many, many. So what we played in the demo was three missions. If that was part of one arc and there are many missions to an arc, you can start to imagine how many missions there actually are in the game. What I'm going to take from it is that him saying I'm not going to name how many missions are in each of the arcs or main story because I don't want to spoil it. So hopefully this will keep us going for quite some time. And they did specify that the main campaign should take around 30 hours to complete. And you will be at level 30 or 30 ish by the time the main campaign is over. Well, guys, that's pretty much everything for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you take part in the competition, the giveaway. Leave comments below, let me know what you thought. If you found this useful, informative, like, subscribe, and definitely share. And until next video, remain there.